Once you understand the different uh, love languages, you're able to better understand your partner. Right. You know, if you're having problems with intimacy, you have to really reevaluate, well, how does my partner compute love? Right. And a lot of times, um, these are uncomfortable conversations to have because yeah. you feel like um, I should know these things, right. but there's no real manual on how to yeah. actually love and explore your wife. You know, mm -hmm. and so you learn these things as you go. Yeah. And so a lot of times we don't like to be on the end where the, we're not knowing or we're the novice in something. And so that's why some men feel like they need to have their conquest of women. And mm -hmm. so they oh, basically, so they oh, and now I know how to treat a woman because I've been with so many women. Right. But that's not the case because each flower is different. Right. You, but, what you use to grow a sunflower is not the same you may use to grow a rose. You know what I mean? Right. And so they go and test all these different flowers and then they feel like, oh, now I know how to cultivate a flower. And that's not actually the case. Different seed. And so I think the fear comes in and not knowing. Mm -hmm. There's always fear in the unknown. And so when you don't know how to love your wife or to how to open up and have that conversation, you know what I mean? It's, it's pretty hard to move past that point. Right. And so you got to be able to have a relationship with your, your partner where not only you're compromising and breaking down, like, okay, being vulnerable. Like, okay, this is what I don't know. You know what I mean? Right. This is who I am. If you can't be vulnerable with your partner, it's hard to grow with someone who's always presenting a mask to you or, or presenting a wall and you really don't know that person. Yeah, it's starting all over, all over, all over again. Because some of the things that we do is we put our best agent forward, not right. our, not who we are. We put our best representation of who we right. want to be in front of people. So when who you all comes out, it's like, whoa, where that come from? Right, who said? And so uh, even with compromise, sometimes we, we lose sight of what we do compromise for. But it helped us though. Yeah, it helped out a lot because it, it set the bar of just being honest, honest. in our relationship yeah. and being able to be honest with each other. Right. So, again, um, with physical touch being my love language, that was a barrier for us at one point in our right. relationship. Because after we got past the little honeymoon phase, we really was like, oh, we're married. Mm -hmm. And so, living with one another. You actually get to see some of the things that you may dislike. But that's why some people jump in and say, oh, we're going to move together first before we get married so I know what type of person you are. But it doesn't, really, help. You, it doesn't help. Yeah, you. I would have rather have went on a journey together um, versus coming into the marriage, um, both um, not being virgins. Um, it created strain. It, it became, it created strains and it created ex unreal expectations of each other. Right. You know what I mean? Physically. To where it's all women that I've been with in the past, I felt like, oh, well, this is how she wants to be loved. Right. Like the women in the past. Right. And with you. I'm a whole different person. You know you're a whole, different, you're a whole person. different person. So you know what I mean? It would have been more enjoyable. I mean, like, God wasn't um, crazy when he said, we, you know, to have sex to a marriage. Um, it was a reason for that. And I think it would have been so much better to enjoy that ride together um, versus coming into it, have, having already, you know, uh, done it. But, any traumatic experience has caused you to stop and freeze growth in that moment. Right. So, like I said, with my gift being physical touch, um, share like how um, that was a barrier for us at um, some point in our marriage. It was difficult. I mean, you think that like, oh, now I'm married, so. Everything's fixed. Yeah, it's, let me see, it's so much, but, um, at one point in time, I just didn't want to be touched um, in my marriage. Um, sexually, I was taken advantage of um, by older men, and I think that the loss of my mom and my dad being incarcerated, there was a void that was empty, and the attention that I received from men uh, filled the void, you know? Um, 
this just ain't rap. This but ain't it fiction. also made a deeper hole. I don't know. That does that make sense? Um, so, like, at that age, immaturely, I'm thinking that the boy was filled, but the hole was bigger. When we got married, um... Check your reflection, make sure that it's I don't know, everything was fine for a while and before you learn in school. There were moments that I don't know. I never knew it was PTSD and um I wish that I could give them something way more tangible. It's hard. I like kind of rejected Ricky at that point of sexual activity, like just not wanting to be touched. Um the heaviest look standing and hopefully it I don't know, did you know it at the time? Did you you was able to identify it or you kinda of like felt like I, was I felt like you were rejecting me because I think that was during that third year when we had our, you know, I won't, won't want to be married. And right, was, calling out, yeah. Yeah, we contemplated with us and um, I was dealing with um, postpartum. Yeah. Postpartum and all of these emotions just came to the surface and um, I was immature as a man to understand that, you know, in that moment I was supposed to cover my wife. Um, I took offense. And so me taking offense, I built a fence in between me and her. I was trying to protect my own self, not realizing that she was the one really hurting. Um, I believe that most of it was when you try to bottle things, your emotions have been buried them so deep, eventually time erodes the things that you buried your pain with and it comes to the surface. And when it comes to the surface, it's like, wow, like now my skeletons are, you know, Reveal. out, <laughs> you know, and your behavior will always tell on your soul. Right. So what you have on the inside of you, it will always come out in your behavior. Um, but I believe had I been a little bit more torn, I think I would have been able to identify, right. but we're able to identify looking back at right. it in yeah. retrospect. But had we called it quits in that moment, we felt like it was the worst yeah. and um, it wasn't worth saving or salvaging. Right. We would have lost out on it. It was way too big. Right. Yeah. So thank God for that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so many women go through this to where, though, either they've been molested or older guys have had inappropriate relationships with them that right. they confuse. Uh, what actually love is supposed to, be, supposed to be and affection and intimacy from the opposite sex and so they will begin to either uh, vilify or become numb to it mm -hmm. to as though either they don't want to have nothing to do with it or they take it as something that they're supposed to give to everyone mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying yeah. um because whenever you get something out of uh maturity mm -hmm. whenever you receive something you will always misuse it so like if my son is three years old, if I give him the keys of my car at this point in his life, right. he's bound to hurt himself and misuse the actual vehicle. When in all actuality, in time, when he's older, is able he's able to be able to use it and, and use it um, effectively. Um, but whenever you give a child or 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 someone something out of their time to be using it or out of their time to understand what they're doing. They will always, it will always be misused right. or mishandled. And um, a lot of times women are objectified when they're young and they're preyed upon. And even young men are sometimes preyed upon. Right. And um, out of that abuse, sometimes you even have sexual addiction or like I said, you have PTSD to as though that trauma causes you to freeze in that moment. Right. And a lot of times when you come into a marriage, you never know what the woman is bringing with her. Right. You get what I'm saying? And then you get married, and then certain things that you say, oh, I'm not going to compromise on. You're not being understanding in what your partner actually went through right. in order to get to you in this time, in this place, in this moment. And so um, one of the things that we always want to do is encourage people to sit down and have a conversation with your spouse. Right. To where it's though, there's no mask, there's no hiding, yeah. there's no walls up. This is who I am, yeah. because only when you come, to, like how you come to God, right? And who you are is made up of uh, you your, know, life your life experiences, exactly. So sharing everything is okay, you know. Because some people want to hide because they're embarrassed, right? 
you know what I mean? And they're trying to bury those things. Like right. I said, the soul never hides your behavior. Yeah. And so you may hide these things verbally from your spouse, but your behavior will... It just made our out. relationship so much better because we brought truth and honesty to it. And we were able to grow together because yeah. a lot of people don't want to grow together. They just want to live together. Right. And, and then living together, it's like, okay... I'm here with you and it's a partnership. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But we got to be on the same team. And to be on the same team, we got to be on the same page. Yeah, like and that's being understanding. Mm -hmm. Because once I understand where you've been, I can understand where we need to go from there. Mm -hmm. Because like I, um, I talked about before in prior weeks, um, once your partner articulates to you what the problem is, and then your job and response is, how do I respond to what my partner articulated to me? And so I feel like sometimes men don't know how to even respond, mm -hmm. you know, because we're, we're trained as a young boy to um, be a certain way, right? Right. Um, emotional. And when our wives hurt, that is the moment where we are the most vulnerable um, because Sometimes we feel like we're helpless, yeah. and we hate that feeling of feeling helpless. Right. I remember when um, when you were giving birth, birth to Chloe, and um, you started having uh, my problems, failed. problems with the epidural, right? <laughs> yeah, my epidural failed, and I was failing the contractions. But they tried at least like three, four times, and they created a um, a leak in the spinal fluid. Right, my spine, yeah. And it was causing for the top part of your body to not be paralyzed, but to be as if you couldn't move and you felt like you were paralyzed mm -hmm. because uh, fluid was leaking from your spine and causing... My brain to separate, so I had like this major headache. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so she was crying and uh, she said, I, I don't want to... You know, she said, I don't want to die yeah. and I don't want to leave my children. And at that moment, as a husband, I trying to uh, be there for my wife. And knowing that it was nothing that I could do, at that moment I felt helpless. And so a lot of times, men, when we feel vulnerable, when we feel helpless, we don't like that feeling. So we don't even like to open up to when you guys are trying to open yourselves up emotionally to us and say, hey, this is my brokenness. Because we don't know how to fix those things sometimes, because men are very solution oriented. Women want to give you the details. We're like, okay, look, what's the solution? Well, where do we go from here? Where's the hammer and the nails? How do we fix it? When it comes to a problem that we don't have the tools to fix, yeah. it, it, it's very hard because it's like, I love her so much, but I don't, I don't have, want her to hurt. I don't want her to hurt, but I don't have the tools to help her, you know? Yeah. And so um, uh, that's where your faith comes in. And that's where um, you really get to grow together because mm -hmm. it's out of both of you guys hands right. and you really have to depend on a higher power in order to get you through that situation right. and that becomes the anchor those moments that you two share whether they be good or bad becomes the weight to your relationship and it becomes the anchor to where though when the times come you're like oh remember we got through this we got through that we got through this well, oh we definitely can get through this this is small my cousin got out, got locked back up, that boy on the sequel. That penal system got his penal glands smothered in fecal matter. I'm still squashing all the chatter, though. Them thotties try me, I dodge that boy like a matter, though. Far as the baddest go, my quota way past the status quo. That's why fat got my heart in the end like a Navajo. 